hi again, this is George from Donzon.com, and we're looking at how to find kanji using JWP, or the Japanese word processor. And this particular uh, video is going to uh, use one of the other tools. So in the previous tool, I mean in the previous video, excuse me, we made use of, of this particular, let me go to it right here, this particular tool, the radical lookup, and when we did that, we were able to select pieces of a particular kanji that we're looking at and hopefully identify it, narrow it down from, from thousands of possibilities to maybe uh, a dozen or less possibilities and easily identify kanji. So, let me close that one. And uh, given that the study of, of uh, Chinese characters is, is a long, uh, long historied uh, study, there are all kinds of different ways to classify and identify these kanji. So the one method that we, we saw there was to <clears throat> take a look at all of the different pieces. Now another way to look at it would be, let's suppose we can identify the radical of, of a particular kanji, and I have a couple of kanji here that uh, have some specific meaning to me uh, that I'll, I'll explain maybe a little bit later. And, uh, and uh, given the, the radical of whatever the radical is for this kanji, then using the stroke, the number of strokes, can we then identify the kanji? Okay, well, let's try that. And the way we do that is we make use of the Bushu tool right here, the Bushu lookup. Bushu, remember, is another word for radical. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and click on it. All right. And a very familiar screen comes up. This looks just like the radical lookup, uh, except there's, there's one particular difference. And that is that with this one, we use, instead of, multiple pieces of the of the kanji with the different radicals, what we use is one of these and then the number of strokes. Okay? So let's see how that works. Uh, first of all, let's say, well, I've got, uh, I can see I've got this piece here and I've got this piece here. Well, you notice that they are kind of mutually exclusive. It's like a radio button, you know, you can only press one of them at a time. So you can go around and say, well, is it that one? No. Is it that one? <clears throat> and you notice that we can't select multiple ones of these at a time. Okay, so let's let's select one of these. And I'm going to go ahead and select this one because that seems to be the most prominent piece of this of this kanji. Um, and before I said in, in previous ones, you know, you can have the radical on the left side, you can have the radical on top. In the previous one with Yoki, we had the radical kind of wrapping around the, uh, the character. And you can also have the radicals on the right side. And this is one example of that where the radical is on the right side. Okay? Uh, we, could, we could try this one as well, but uh, uh, we'll make this uh, I'll kind of use some, some previous knowledge and let you know that, that this particular part is the radical, okay, whatever that that thing means. Okay, uh, just out of, uh, for your interest, that means power. Uh, that means power, yeah. It looks similar to this one, but that one means uh, sword or knife, and this one means power. Okay, so we have that radical, we identify the radical, and then we have to now count all of the strokes. So let's do that. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I may have done that out of order, but uh, that's the correct number of strokes in here. So we go down to this box, click on it, and type in the number twelve. And we went from a couple of hundred possibilities 
down to four. One, two, three, four. So do any of these characters look like that character? Well, lo and behold, the one that, that first came up, this one, seems to be that one. Let's let's get a bigger picture of that by clicking on the get info button. And how about that? Look at that. That's a that's a that's an exact match of of that particular character. How about that? So we're going to insert that into our file. Okay. Actually, we'll insert it into the file using this part. There we go. There we go. So we now have that character there. So again, remember, think of this. Even though I have it on the on the, uh, the computer, uh, let's let's say that this was on uh, a piece of paper. In my case, this was. This was on a certificate that I received back in 1993 uh, related to martial arts. And it said this, and I said, oh, I wonder what that means. And How do you say that? So this was, this was on there, and I didn't know what that meant. So I've got the first one. OK, now, using our strategy from the last one, again, again we could use the, the radical lookup or the Bushu lookup for this one, for this second kanji, but let's see if we can find this using our, our uh, rationale with uh, using the dictionary. Uh, this may appear, it may not. I didn't try this beforehand. And let's, see if it, let's see if it comes up. So we'll click on that. And all right, let's take, let's take a look here and see if we can see what this says. OK, so this by, by itself means to be fit for, to be equal to, or to serve. Okay. Um, okay, but I don't see this second kanji here. So let's kind of scroll through and see if we can find it. And what I'm doing is I'm looking, I'm looking down here, and we and I'm looking for, for the combination. And actually, I think I I think I just hit upon it right there. If you notice, that one kind of looks like that one. That one and that one kind of match. So let's let's uh, let's see what it says. It says keen, and that's he with a with a two, the two tick marks makes a be be n. So keen ben keen ben keen ben is uh, is that. I'm going to click on that and insert that into the file. And we'll close this little pop-up here. And I'll just remove that first one. Since I'm inser inserting it into the file, it uh, it uh, has that, that original one in there. Anyway, so Keen Ben. Now, what does this what does this mean? Well, it was actually in there in the dictionary, but I'll I'll pop it up again here. Keen Ben means uh, with industry or diligence, diligence, and on that certificate that I received back in 1993, it talked about uh, uh, the person who received that certificate had uh, studied for many years with diligence, keen ben. So that's uh, that's uh, what I what I got back in 1993. So uh, so oh, okay, so now I know that when I'm when I'm reading that certificate, that when I Come upon that, I would say, keen ben, or diligence. Okay, so there's uh, there's an example of uh, taking a taking something from, in my case, a piece of paper, a certificate, and finding out uh, what it says. Now, while I'm here, just real briefly, in, in Japanese, a particular character. Let's let's select that first one, and I'm going to go Control I. Um, I'm going to do that on the keyboard for speed. I could have gone up to the to the character info button as well, but anyway, notice that over here on the right side, there are multiple ways of of pronouncing this character. Okay, there's you can say keen. You can say gone. You can say tutomeru, uh, stomeru. Um, you 
you can say, uh, let's see, that's Suto uh, Maru, and this is Iso Shimu. And uh, so there are different ways of saying it. So, so in, in context, how would, we, how would we say it with this character? And that's, that's an ongoing problem with, uh, with learning Japanese, is, is that we'll have a, a character, and there'll be multiple ways to pronounce it. And how do you, how do, you do it in, in context with another character? So you've got to be careful of that. And uh, uh, using JWP really helps in, in finding that. It's not always foolproof, but it, it helps in finding uh, our, our contextual pronunciation of a character. So in this case, it's Keen Ben and not Gon Ben or, or the other one that I, I forgot now um, in there. So, okay, that's, uh, that's this lesson, and we'll continue with uh, finding kanji and using the tools in the next video.